range. This is a spinner um, assembly for a um, salt dog spreader. This one is the SHPE 2000. Um, however, uh, the spinners on these are the same for several models. So the problem with this unit, as you can see, it's been uh, damaged. Uh, so we backed up into something and it, it bent it up. Uh, so I'm trying to take it apart to sort of salvage it. You can see it's bent all through here. And um, it's bent in the back. Uh, most of it, the cra it's not cracked or damaged. Uh, and the spinner itself isn't bad. And I think the motor and everything still works. So we're going to try to uh, basically just get this, this piece right through here that everything bolts to and try to get it straightened out and fixed up. Uh, the problem is, whenever you try to work on these, whether or not you have um, a problem with the actual um, spinner brakes, um, or let's say that your motor inside here goes bad, um, you know, you need to take the spinner uh, off of this shaft right here. So that becomes the problem, because on the bottom of this spinner, uh, there's a pin uh, with a cotter pin in it, and it seizes up, and you can't get it off of it. So now you can see that I've um, grinded off the old pin that was in there. At this point, I can just slide the spinner right off of there. Uh, so set this to the side, and we're going to work on getting this pin out. And you can see now pretty clear where uh, that extra hole is on this thing. And you can see the notch, how I cut it out. It's pretty easy so that I can slide it back on there. Now I'm going to work on getting this part out. And you can also see, if I turn to the side angle, the extra hole that's up here. So we could just use this hole and just leave this one completely. Um, if you can't get this out, that's fine. You just put the spinner back on, use a stainless bolt right through there, and you're good to go. Now that I've got this done, I'll be able to get this to part the rest of the way. Replace the motor, replace the shaft if I need to, replace this piece because I got the spinner off and I'll be able to reuse it. So let's see if we can get this apart. First thing I'm going to do is try a polar with some washers like this. So I'm going to organize it in a way that uh, the washers here will allow the pin to come through the hole. I use the puller to push through that way and see if I can apply some pressure on it. So don't know if this is going to work. We're going to give it a shot and see if it works. I'm going to take it apart and take a look at it here. Well, you can see I'm pressing into that spot, but it's not really making any um, progress on actually pushing it out. So probably my only other choice here, uh, I could heat it up and try to get it out that way, um, or I could just drill it out, which I think is probably what I'm going to go with at this method. Uh, I'm going to make a little set screw spot in there. I'm going to put it on my drill press. I'm going to drill it out. Uh, otherwise, um, my other option, if you if you really had to get one of these out, is you could heat it up with a torch, and then you could use a punch or a press and try to press it through like I was just doing. Because of right now, you can see that it made a dent in there, but it's not moving the pin at all. It's completely seized in there. Uh, so, so yeah, I want to make a little um, set right here. Then I'm going to run a drill bit down through there with my drill press. So uh, let me get back at it. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I've got the motor out of this area, um, out of the protective uh, covering here. And you can see from our accident, it sort of uh, cracked this uh, and broke off one of the mounting holes. So we'll probably end up getting a new cover for this. Um, like I said, to start with, I've modified the spinner. I got the spinner off intact. Uh, the other hole will still be able to be utilized.
This component looks okay, so we'll reuse it. And then I ground off this and I drilled through there and my drill spot wasn't quite in the center, couldn't quite get it centered in there because of the way I ground it off or cut it off, but at the same time I drilled through there and I tapped off the rest. So I'll be able to put a pin through both of these holes again in the original spot and uh, we'll put it back together and instead of buying this uh, whole spinner assembly uh, as you see it you can buy this whole unit here for about six hundred dollars uh, but instead we're just going to buy pretty much this one piece here that's really bent <laughs> so uh, we're going to buy this piece that's really messed up and uh, this kind of bolts everything together and keeps it straight uh, so we're going to buy this unit instead, put it all back together, and we're probably going to buy this protective cover and uh, save a lot of money. So hey, keep watching these videos. Uh, I'll try to save myself, and I'll try to save you some money too. Um, thanks for watching. Ring the bell and subscribe. Okay, so here's the follow-up. Uh, I've got it back to s together uh, and reassembled. Uh, so I actually did not um, get a new cover for this I uh, ended up just doing a little repair here on the side with some Gorilla Tape um, and tried to patch it up because we're going to use it soon didn't have to wait I can always replace this cover um, if I want or if I need to order it I can replace that cover but uh, got it back together um, the pieces over here I did not order new either I managed to get those apart and I managed to just bend it and hammer that thing uh, straight with my vise. So I just straighten this all out with my hammer uh, and my vise and the anvil on the vise. See, I got it pretty square, fairly straight. It was bent. There's still a little wobble in it, but not too much. It's pretty uniform now. Let's take a look at the bottom here. Yeah, so this is after I straighten it. You can see it's pretty straight. And I just uh, taped up some areas that it was cracked uh, on the cover. Now, as for on the bottom pin, uh, what I did here was, you can see I put on there some fluid film to keep it from rusting, but... I just took a cotter pin um, and I put a cotter pin through the hole uh, and then one half of the cotter pin here I bent underneath of the shaft I left the other half just stick out straight that way it's it's on there um, good and solid um, but this cotter pin is a little smaller than the hole um, so it will wobble it would wobble a little bit um, uh, otherwise uh, however uh, the cotter pin is also um, really soft so as this rusts and comes out it should be really easy to to just hammer that out of there and it won't seize up like it did before uh, or uh, super easy to run a drill right down through there because the cotter pins are super soft and bendable um, now I mentioned in the other earlier section of the video um, that I was gonna put a stainless steel bolt through the top hole and that's exactly what I did So you can see right there, uh, I put the stainless steel bolt through, uh, and I just put a lock nut on the other side. Uh, so now we kind of got her shaped up. So you can see that it spins uh, pretty straight and even. Uh, everything through here. Uh, right down through here and up and around uh, I rebent all that you can see there's a teeny bit of wobble at the top but I rebent and straightened all that um, you know I'm missing one mounting bolt for the cover up here because that tab snapped off uh, so that's why I put some tape through here and I don't know how long this tape will hold up but in the meantime it will work for me everything's functional um, and I got everything back together So hopefully that's helped you out. Uh, keep watching my videos and um, 
I will update you and try to show you some ways to save some money. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you do mechanical work, snow work, uh, I do a lot of landscape related stuff, tires. Um, I do all kinds of mechanical stuff, Chevy trucks. And um, I'll keep you updated on little tips and tricks that I know. Ways to save money. Uh, in this situation, I didn't end up having to, I didn't buy anything actually to fix this. Uh, so, you know, it could have been 300 bucks, um, you know, for parts, or maybe uh, even up to 600 bucks if I would have bought a whole new unit. Uh, by the time I would have been done with that back cover, the metal, this cover, um, and then if I didn't get the shaft out, that could have been more. It could have been up to anywhere from 150 to 300 bucks to replace the parts. Uh, otherwise, I just took a hammer and my vise and straightened all this out uh, as close as I could get it. So basically, saved myself somewhere between three and six hundred bucks, and uh, I'm gonna go make some money with this thing very shortly. So um, thanks for watching. Subscribe, ring the bell. Talk to you soon.